Hello everyone, welcome to Branch Out Blue. Today we have a video on history. This video is covering the top 10 largest empires in history. We have all heard of huge and famous empires like the Roman Empire, the British Empire, the Mongol Empire. But have you ever wondered which one of these are the largest of them all? We will find out with this top 10. Number 10. The Portuguese Empire. This is an empire that not many people talk about, but it laid the groundwork for most of the huge European colonial empires. So, this was one of the first colonial empires, and most credited being started to Prince Henry the Navigator, who set up various navigation and ship related schools that um, made many sailors grow up in the country. This led to them creating a huge naval trade empire. They colonized a few African countries and Brazil. Brazil was their biggest land area, but they also had a few ports and a few small islands in many places, including India. So they were mainly all about trade compared to land area, like many of the other empires. Next, we go to number nine, the Yuan Dynasty. This is where Marco Polo stayed a lot in his expeditions. It was mostly created by Kublai Khan, but some of his sons ruled it, but they weren't very competent. The only really competent ruler of the Yuan dynasty was Kublai Khan. He hosted Marco Polo in his courts and made great advancements in China's culture. The picture on the top is Kublai Khan. He is one of Genghis Khan's descendants and the Yuan dynasty was an offshoot of the Mongol Empire and he technically controlled the rest of the offshoots too but he really didn't have complete power over them. Next, we go to number 8, the Umayyad Caliphate. It lasted from 661 to 750 and it was one of the Muslim empires it was uh, created by one of the descendants of Muhammad, the Muslim prophet, and it covered a massive area stretching from Spain and Portugal all the way to parts of India. It was a truly massive empire. Sorry about that. Anyway, this empire splintered into multiple parts uh, when it fell, and hearing a lot of sounds, it's probably because of construction. Anyway, back to this. This empire took over the Sassanid dynasty and really hunted the Byzantines, which were a succession to the Romans. At number 7, we have the Abbasid Caliphate. They split off from the Umayyad Caliphate and controlled most of it. They were also descended from another. Uh, uh, they were also descended from Muhammad in a different way. They also controlled parts of Europe, like Crete and Sicily, but they were nowhere as big compared to the Umayyad Caliphate. Next up is number 6, the French Colonial Empire, also called the Second French Empire. This empire was started by Napoleon III. You must have heard of his uncle. He is the Napoleon that most people talk about. But in fact, Napoleon III also conquered a lot of land in Northern Africa, Vietnam and a few islands around the world. After the Napoleon III was deposed, the presidents of France continued this empire and made it even bigger, swelling to its greatest extent in World War I after capturing multiple German territories and some areas in the Middle East. This empire was also indirectly responsible for the Vietnam War where the USA famously failed against a country that was much smaller than it. And they actually still hold some land in South America and a few islands scattered across the world. The territory of French Guiana is still part of France 
and unlike some other places, they have complete jurisdiction over it. Coming up next is the Spanish Empire, number 5, that lasted from 1492 to 1976. These were a gigantic empire. And they actually coined the famous supposedly British term that the sun never sets or X empire. It was first made by the Spanish and then the British took it because it also applied to the British. The Spanish had most of their territories in the Americas, but they also had the Philippines and a few small parts of Africa. And at one point, they also controlled some lands in Germany and Italy because of their very confusing Habsburg line that I really can't get into. And this empire actually controlled a big part of the USA once and once Mexico gained independence, it still controlled a big part of what is now the USA and the USA fought a war with them and took over the land. The first rulers of this empire were Isabella I and Ferdinand V. They both were husband and wife and co-rulers of the empire. And they also happened to be the first rulers of Spain as a whole. I remember the Umayyad Caliphate from before? They controlled Spain. And after an 800-year-long war called the Reconquista, both Portugal and Spain took over their currently existing land and actually got, had a monarchy. Before that, they were all separated into multiple different kingdoms. Next up is number four, the Qing Dynasty. It lasted from 1636 to 1912. It controlled all of modern day China and all of modern day Mongolia and it had a bit of influence over both Koreas and parts of Southeast Asia. And this empire were actually not even a part of the main Chinese population. They came from the north and took over from the previous empire. But they ended up being the biggest empire that China has ever seen. But eventually they fell to a democratic revolt in 1912. They also fell victim to European colonization. Though no European power ever took over a major part of China, they still took over many port cities and got huge spheres of influence, many even near the capital. Some examples of these cities are Hong Kong and Macau that are still a bit contentious in China today. Now, coming to our top three largest empires in history. At third place, we have the Russian Empire from 1721 to 1917. Technically, the country of Russia existed before that, but it was made into its modern form in 1721 by Peter the Great. Peter the Great greatly improved Russia and expanded it a lot. Another important ruler was Queen Catherine. At its height in the 1800s, the Russian Empire controlled all of modern-day Russia, parts of northern China, most of the um, Central Asia, and Alaska, which is just gigantic. And furthermore, a bit of Eastern Europe and Finland. It fell in 1917 after World War I and turned into the Soviet Union. And next, we have number. Number two, the runners-up, the Mongol Empire, created by the famous Genghis Khan or Chinggis Khan. There are many ways in which his name is pronounced, but um, there's no specific correct one that it was originally Chinggis Khan. Anyway, this empire was massive, even and it controlled most of Eurasia, which is just huge. It controlled China, Mongolia, Central Asia, the Middle East parts of Eastern Europe, it was just huge and that too, it was in a continuous block instead of being spread out throughout the world. This is why some people do think that the Mongol Empire was the largest because when it's out on a map, it looks like the Mongol Empire controls this huge area and the number one spot, which I'm not going to tell you yet, controls 
a spread out area on the map. So but usually people think that the Mongol Empire is bigger, but it's actually not. Anyway, this empire got huge and after this point it really just fell apart. And as you can see, it as you can see by how short lived it was, the Mongolian Empire grew huge fast and splintered quickly. Furthermore, the Mongol Empire also spawned many other empires, such as even the Mughal Empire, which is very famous in India. And now, coming to the biggest empire in history, the number one spot, the British Empire that lasted from 1584 to 1997. This Empire is the largest empire ever, colonizing about a quarter of the world and invading most of the countries throughout the world. It was started by Queen Elizabeth I and it reached its height under Queen Victoria. Technically, it reached its height under Queen King George, but Queen Victoria laid the groundwork for King George to actually take it to its height. height, this empire held Canada, Australia, many islands throughout the world, the Indian subcontinent, parts of the Middle East, and a huge part of Africa. As I just said, it's gigantic. But since it's sprawled across the map, some people don't really understand how huge it is. Anyway, after World War II, the empire was weakened so much that it just couldn't hold on to its colonies and it's become the UK that we know today. But it still technically owns Canada, Australia and a bunch of other countries in the Commonwealth. And so now we come to the end of our list. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed and this is Branch Out Brain. Goodbye.